Hello everyone and welcome back to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we are finally continuing our big block building series. This is part seven of the long running building series I'm doing here on YouTube. I've left a link down below in the description to the other videos we've done previously. Um, if you've been here for the whole journey, I really, really appreciate it. And I'm sorry it's been so long since the last one. A fan of the channel that wants to remain anonymous actually donated a four bolt main big block Chevy and said that I, they couldn't live with themselves if I only had a two bolt main. And there were some mix ups with the machine shop getting it uh, to the spec I wanted. And uh, there was some mix up with the connecting rods I had to sort out and finish. So not every engine build goes smoothly. This one is certainly no exception. So I wanted to uh, just tell you guys that it's been a few weeks just because of uh, some mix ups and I wanted to thank the person that donated to me a four bolt main gen 4 big block Chevy Which is what this is board 30 thousandths over So with all that out of the way today We're going to be focusing on putting the timing set in getting it timed correctly and putting the timing cover on I know it doesn't sound like a lot But there's a lot to meet and a lot of really important critical stuff this video that if you get even a little bit wrong will either ruin the engine or will leak forever so it's really important to pay attention at this time. With all that out of the way, I've put all the applicable links down below in the description, and let's jump into it. All right, here's our timing set for today. It's a Cloy's 9-3110. I have left a link down below in the description to this exact uh, part, and you can find that information down below. So let's go ahead and open it. And we can open that up to reveal our timing chain, our uh, gear that goes on the end of the crank, snout. And this is really cool. It came with a thrust bearing. This goes on the back side of the uh, camshaft gear. Uh, so you have a bearing between that and the engine, which is super, super cool. And then you of course have your camshaft gear, which is awesome. And I did want to mention that this particular system I have has three settings on it. So you can advance the cam, have it straight up or have it uh, slightly retarded by plus or minus four degrees for this particular setup. So if you wanted like, a hardcore race car you could uh, retard it so all the power is on the top end and if you wanted like a low-end grunt monster you could advance it so all the power is uh, lower in the rev range and if you are just driving around street car like I'm gonna be doing we're gonna put it right in the middle so it doesn't have any uh, advance or retardation so when we're installing our timing set on our engine here we need number one to be at top dead center and our wood drift key which you can't see it's right about where my middle finger is needs to be pointing this direction at number one. You can also tell because this piston will be at the top of our cylinder bore. And I'm gonna show you how a really easy way how you can turn the engine over without using some sort of weird setup. So what I've done is taken some of the bolts that came off my old uh, crankshaft and flex plate assembly and installed them on the back of the crankshaft, three of them. And then I'm gonna take a large screwdriver or pry bar and then you can move the engine like this and just keep doing that until that wood drift key points at number one. So we can start turning our engine here and uh, get that wood drift key pointed in the right direction. And there we go. Our wood drift key is pointing at number one and number one is at the top of its engagement. So before we do anything, we're gonna take our camshaft sprocket and place it on there to make sure we got the wood drift key right. And the way you can tell is because this key that's on there says zero when it's pointed straight up. So we know it's not the advanced or the retarded setting. Um, and you can read your instructions to get a little more in depth about that. But the, the simple fact of the matter is for this engine, this dome shape on the Woodruff key is the stock settings. And that's what we're after today. But before we go any further, we're gonna heat this up in like a toaster oven or something because that'll help the metal expand and be able to uh, be pounded on easier because this is a pressed fit. So I have my crankshaft sprocket for the timing set in there. My setting's about 200 degrees. Don't roast it to a bazillion. Like 200 degrees is pretty good. It, you know, you still have to handle it. So don't go too nuts. So we're gonna make sure that's nice and toasty before we try putting it on. All right, using my oven mitt here, this thing's about 200 degrees, so it's pretty toasty. We can go ahead and slide this on past our wood drift key here. Get it nice and snug. Now, what I'm gonna do here is take a really large socket, which you can get pretty much anywhere, any big auto parts store. Um, not sure how big around this one is, but it's it's of good size. And we can slip that over the end of our crank snout and making sure none of the little points of this particular socket in, uh, interfere with our teeth. And there we go. 
And we can double check by seeing the zero at the top and the dome on our woodruff key. So when you're hammering away at this too, you'll feel it kind of go on and then give and then stop. That means it's right at the uh, end of its travel. And don't worry if it's not on down to the micron perfect, because when we put the harmonic balancer on the end of the crank snout, it's really gonna push it on. This is what the finished product should look like. There shouldn't really be a gap between the end of the uh, cog or sprocket and the very beginning of the crankshaft. All right, so I'm gonna be using some ARP bolts uh, for the end of our camshaft sprocket here. And uh, I didn't save the ones I had, they were in pretty grubby shape. So I bought some new ones, they're by ARP, part number 1341001. I'll leave a link down below. And uh, we can go ahead and test fit these to make sure they work. Okay, we're good, these work perfect. All right, so now we need to set our uh, camshaft before we get to the really exciting part with the timing chain and all that noise. Uh, we need to set our timing of our camshaft. And the way we do that is we can pre-fit this on and we can see that this dot isn't pointing straight down at our zero, which it really needs to be for installation purposes. So we can just go ahead and rotate that until we're at the bottom. So our dots are now pointing directly at each other, which is what you want, nice and straight up and down. So what I got here is a stainless steel bowl and some just regular engine oil. I had laying around the shop. The engine oil is not the important part. The important part is that our uh, thrust bearing and our timing chain are nice and oiled. And trust me when I say you can't be too oiled in this situation. So make sure it is just nice and coated with as much oil as you can get on there. And then our thrust bearing too, that's really easy because it's so thin. But now our chain's ready for installation. All right, so our thrust bearing here has two surfaces, this nice uh, metal surface. Oh, well, they're both metal, but a nice kind of silvery metallic and then a black metallic surface. Our black metallic surface actually goes down like this. When I first got the kit, I thought it was the other way. It's not, it's the um, silvery metallic surface facing you and it goes up on that groove just like that. All right, the next thing we can do is put our timing chain on here and it's a little awkward to maneuver the chain and the gears properly and you'll know if it's off because it'll be off by a lot because um, it has to be lined up perfectly on the tooth and if it's off one tooth it'll be off quite a bit like see how these two marks line up with each other if they didn't line up they'd be off by one whole tooth. So what we're gonna do is put our cam gear bolts in so it doesn't just fall off on us. And then we're gonna take them out one by one and put Loctite on. Then we can grab our half inch socket here and snug those up. You wanna do them uh, as evenly as you can too. You don't wanna like clamp one down crazy hard and then go to the next one. So you just want a little snug there, a little tight there, and just keep going around in a nice circle. There we go. So one thing I wanna point out before we go any further is the tautness of this chain. It is pretty tight when you're wiggling it around here. If this has any more slop than this, you either A, have the wrong chain or B, a worn out chain, both of which are unacceptable. So this is what your final result should look like when we're uh, lining up the timing marks. What I've done is put some black Sharpie on the uh, stamped metal pieces. Uh, on your application, they won't be black marks, so they'll just be stamped metal. I've only put the black marks there for uh, visual purposes, but they should line up perfectly like this. So all there should be four holes basically in line. The crank bolt hole, your timing mark for your crank, timing mark for your cam, and the cam center. So these four should all be in a perfect line just like this. If it is off slightly, you might be off a tooth, so you want to pull the uh, gear off and try again because it needs to look just like this. So what I've done is remove the uh, bolts for the cam gear here. And we're gonna apply some Loctite, some red 262 Loctite, link down below in the description. And I've taken the bolts out and I've cleaned those with some carburetor spray so there's no oil on them. And we're gonna apply some Loctite on them. And that's what it should look like about midway down the threads all the way to the end is plenty. And then we can install it. And we're gonna do that for uh, all of these. And make sure to shake your Loctite like it says on the bottle before you use it. And we can just give these a little even snug lightly. And then we're gonna grab our torque wrench and set that to 20 foot-pounds. And notice the torque wrench didn't go off right there, but I'm switching anyway because I want to keep the tension as even as possible.
There's 20. There's 20. And there's 20. And the next thing we're going to do is install our front main seal in our timing chain cover. This is what it looks like and it only goes in one direction. This surface here needs to face back towards the engine while this surface with no opening needs to face towards you. And what I like to do is before I do anything is grab a little silicone rubber here on the end of your finger and just slide it around the edge here uh, to help guide us in a little easier and it helps create a seal. So double seal, why not, right? You don't want to use a ton, just a just skin of it would be perfect. So now we got our silicone rubber nice and uh, distributed. We can set that in its home. And, oops. and when we're doing that, you want to make sure that it is totally flush when you sit down because when you're pounding it in, you want it to be completely oops, flat as it goes in. Like that. Now, I have a special tool. It's a seal installer. Uh, you can get these on Amazon for pretty cheap. I think you can rent them from AutoZone for almost nothing. Um, but if you're really in a pinch, a uh, flat piece of metal going around very, very evenly will work too, but this is more of like a sure thing. And it's idiot proof, so it's good. So uh, it's in a little cockeyed, it's a little crooked, so I'm gonna try to tap this into, into place to make it level, which I have not done. So it might take you a little bit to get uh, the sit just right, because, I mean, you're basically chasing it around due to it being oversized. And once it's kind of set in there, nice and flush, we can hammer it home and it should look like that. So this is something you're not gonna be able to see, you're gonna have to feel this with your finger, is you wanna run it around the seal to make sure that it's not up in one area and down in another. Um, but ours, so far, is perfect. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is clean our gasket surface area for the timing cover. This seal is incredibly important. If it is not clean and not installed properly, it will leak oil for the life of the engine, which is no good. So we're gonna get some carburetor spray, link down below in the description, apply it to our paper towel. And we're just gonna clean this surface really well. If you think that you're being, uh, you think you're being too obsessive with how clean it is, you're wrong. You want it to be as clean as possible. I mean, look how much has already come off, um, and we're not even halfway done cleaning. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is take a shop towel here with some carburetor spray, our best friend. And we're gonna make sure that the whole mating surface here, where the seal's gonna go, is nice and clean. And there we go, now we're ready for our gasket. So we're over here at the scenic trash can because we're gonna be using some spray adhesive here. I have some Loctite stuff. And uh, we're gonna be spraying one side completely. This gasket in our application is completely reversible. So I'm gonna be spraying this side with the stripes. It really doesn't matter. But double check on yours just in case. And when you're spraying, you wanna make sure that you have a nice, pretty thick coat, thicker than you'd think like that of our contact cement. And now we can go over to the plate. And we can set this thing down and is place. So it's on both sides and then we can take it up and place it back down, let the air get in there. Make sure, you gotta kinda work quickly too. It's contact cement, so it's solidifying right now. And there we go. So the next thing we're gonna do is take our professional grade RTV silicone rubber and uh, apply it to our fingertip here. And what we're gonna do is run around the inside of the bolt pattern on this gasket here. Um, because if you go on the outside, it's just like a differential. If you go on the outside of the bolt, uh, oil's gonna get out. It's gonna get through the threads. So you wanna do on the inside a nice uh, thin layer here, about that thickness all the way around. So when you're applying this to, uh, you want it nice and thin because you don't want this to get into your engine, obviously. So uh, when you're tightening it down, it's gonna squedge out and you don't want that to go in your motor. So that's what it should look like when you're done, a nice thin uh, skin of RTV on your gasket. So our timing cover bolts today are from ARP. They're a 25002. I have left a link down below in the description for you. And I'm using new bolts here, put a new engine together. We'll get some new bolts, so it looks nice. All right, it's putting our timing cover on here. And you wanna put this on as straight as possible. Don't try to wiggle it around. So it has uh, dowels that it goes on, on left and right side. There we go, that was good. And then we can get these, our 5 16ths. 
bolts from ARP. Yours might be 7 16 And then just try to do as cross pattern as possible because obviously it's a horseshoe shape, not a perfect circle. So I'm just snugging them up by hand very loosely. So I'm just snugging these up here, doing as much of a cross pattern as I can to try to get the thing to walk on evenly. And if you do this too tightly, you can actually split the gasket, which will cause a leak. So don't go crazy. Alrighty, our official torque spec for today is six foot-pounds. And I want to bring up that you're going to want to do this two or three times because as force is applied, the gasket is going to compress and that bolt's going to be loose. So we're going to do this two or three times. And we want to do a cross pattern just like we did before as best you can. There's six. Six. So now what we're going to do that we've done this is we're going to wait five minutes and do it again. So we're going to do this uh, step three times. So that is how to put the timing set on a Gen 4 uh, Big Block Chevrolet. It is um, something you're going to want to take your time with and be really methodical, be really thoughtful, mindful, and cleaning every surface you really can before applying any kind of adhesive. That's really, really important and make sure uh, you have your correct gasket set. So all applicable links, like I said before, are located down below in the description. You've been amazing. Make sure you're subscribed to catch more Big Block content coming very soon. I'm going to try to get them in uh, two week cycles again, because now everything's within my control instead of out of my control with the machine shop. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.